I've been given some thought to how you should dispose of my remains. What? So, so first of all, we have a first introduction of this poem and it literally collapses our idea. It's not anymore talking about recycling, now it's talking about remains. So we are going to talk about the Daniel ruins because Daniel is a really important person. Everybody should know exactly the witness after his death. So let's go on. I've been given some thought to how you should dispose of my remains. After I'm gone, I begin, knowing that this won't be an easy conversation. Of course, Daniel won't be an easy conversation to speak about death, especially in this particular period. But again, I want to tell you that what we are gonna, we're gonna read into this moment is not going to be related to the coronavirus recent situation, because Daniel was always like this, and he was always talking about this particular subject. He was really obsessed. I hope that now is really safe and is feeling healthy, by the way, because I'm not wishing anything he wrote about himself in this particular poem. Obviously, donate any bits that are still usable. Let me think about it. Are you talking about an organic poem about your remains and you also mention and light the fact that the things that are going to extract from your body has to be useful. Of course they have to be useful. Because if they, they, they're not useful, you won't be saved any lives. So, come on. There is a joke in between that, but at the same time, there is a sort of parodic way of using the poet that is making melt in myself. Then there is a card in my wallet, and the A cell should have it on record. Now, this is a precise clue because Daniel with the A cell is so obsessed, there is something going on for this, there must be a reason. And I also know that the guy had a lot of suffering and pathology during his life, so um, in, it's not an easy conversation for me to tell you that there is a reason why he's telling you that, but for sure. Uh, is connected to the fact that he also had other suffering, real physical suffering. The point is that is always uh, uh, <laughs> unbelievable that someone is going to write in a poem about the A cell and maybe you should know now public and you are forced to know that if you want to help Daniel in a way when is that you have to contact this well, you have to try to catch his wallet which I don't know where he's gonna take that and try to find the card for the A cell in order to contact them. Then if it were up to me I would say round up some neighbors and drop me into the organic trash, preferably on Monday, just after they hunted it. <laughs> now, I want to tell you, Monday is the precise uh, day, usually in Italy, we decide to do the recycling and we change the rubbish uh, during the apartment, but this is not preferably what we are going to do, because also the other country adopted this away, I mean, either way, we have we work, I think we work in the same thing, so we have not to focus only on Italy, but there's a, there are some kind of prescription in England uh, to throw it rubbish, and I know for sure uh, that uh, it's complicated to see a recycling uh, uh, sort of um, process uh, in London because uh, uh, there are a lot of rules that are not effectively practiced, that are not effectively made uh, in this town, but that makes me really uh, that, that was really something that strikes me when I saw uh, the mention, mention someone that is bouncing on the rubbish because he's still alive or something. That's what exactly is presenting in the next line. So get a look. Um, prefer a moment just after they hunted it. Leave it until the weekend and I'll be bouncing around on top of a pile of pruned branches and each clippings for everyone to see, which wouldn't be respectful. And anyway, someone... This some um that that could be a um, sort of English idioms or procrastination like a sort of ellipsis or something would call the vigili and get you into trouble. 
Yeah, our Italian surveillance is called Vigili and they can like avoid any such uncomfortable situation that some uh, sort of delinquents can make during the day. But uh, Vigili is not only a security protection, I mean, uh, there are also Caramba, which are other order forces. But what makes me uh, really think about that is that he mentioned the Vigili like they are only one around the world making these rules respected. You should not bouncing around in the rubbish. Come on, Daniel. This is not what your body are going through. And you're not going to finish in a rubbery bouncing around. We prefer another way to die, of course. And if you bounce around still when you die, that means you are not dead. That means if you finish in the rubbish. So now I procrastinate. I have something in my mind that clicks uh, and sticks to this kind of um, mention, to this kind of anecdote. Basically, Shameless, it was an episode, brain, no, I don't think so, it was a Netflix, but it was a mainstream program. And it was really famous in the United States. And you can see this man that he was completely throwing the rubbish because he was called Frank and he was like the lazy bones, so sluggard of the family. But then, that really, uh, it's unpredictable, you know? If you tell yourself that your body is bouncing around and you will be in such terms with yourself, come on, get a grip from this point of view. And then, I have thought I'd like to be bored back in the UK, but you know, what with Brexit and that, I've sort of gone off the idea. Why not to be bored in Brex in UK? I understand the point, but uh, even if Brexit is, is going on, there's no point for you in being you English. You have no problem about residence. You can come back in the UK in any moment you want. So I guess this man probably has a real affection for Italian people. That's why he wants to definitely be buried and be remembered here. And you have to embrace his soul. Then he goes, plus it would cost an arm and a leg. Aha, uh -huh. that's the real reason, Daniel. We all knew that you're a bit sort of a selfish person with the money, you don't want to waste a lot, and that where the, where the problem starts, because all is around the money. Even now that, unfortunately, I don't want to touch this theme, and I remember, remember the first time that I started this YouTube channel, I told you that you have to uh, completely separate the topic we are going through now with the, the team that I'm analyzing in this moment. I know that you are thinking about uh, the problem of Brexit itself and what is going on around the world, but you know what makes me really think now is that you also connect uh, you. So it's not that anymore. We are talking about money and business now. That's another, another kind of direction of the story. And that goes on. Keep the money for the grandkids. Oh, that's very generous of you, Daniel. And then when they arrive, did you know that in Britain you can be buried in the boots, in a cheap cardboard coffin, or just a shroud? I would love that. That's amazing. I, I don't care about where I'm going when I'm dying. I, I just want to maybe, yeah, donate my organs as well, but I believe that life is much more interesting than death and there is a lot of digging to death and if you only predict about dying, that's not a prediction, that's, that's, a, that's a certain, that's a security, man. And we also live of hope sometimes, but doesn't seem like this point, this part, this point is arrived arrive at the end. With, the, with this kind of poem, like Daniel also effectively makes us feeling his passion and his sufferings for the life he's living. And then again, but, but you will miss me telling you how things are better there. You can even bury a loved one in your garden if you have one. Doha house with a garden in the southwest doesn't come cheap. So I think that Daniel, in this case, is, is wondering, is make us wondering if he has a lover or if he has a garden with an economic house. I don't quite believe what's the truth in his like argument. But I believe that he's saying at the same time he's hoping to have a lover next to him, that he loves him, and at the same time to have a garden that is cheap to bar to bury himself. Um, I think he's talking about society and at the same time in a parodic way he's going to basically drop a shadow of anything we have or specific like our uh, costumes and our code, the Galatium and everything. But at the same time, it's quite uh, confusing and misleading because I guess uh, we also would love to have someone next to us when we die. And 
I believe that when we die, we are very alone and you are not the only one. But uh, I guess that that's the meaning of the poem. It wants to be uh, directly, universally to everybody, to every one of us. But specifically to a certain target who was not able to be loved by anyone. And then again, which leaves Italy regulated all to hell, so as to guarantee some lobby group a decent living, milking the rest of us. I, I truly believe that what he's saying makes a lot of sense, but in his own way, you interpret him things. Like, Italian people are almost like the same, like the other hell. But what is telling you is that if I have to choose to a specific hell, I guess that you will choose the Italians one. It goes, the undertaker again, it is every time in his words, like this, this, uh, this physiology has a problem, like a connection. He's talking about undertaker. And it's always in his poem, like he's the perf perfect protagonist of his story. He can't do nothing about it. Like, it's like a sort of images that he has in his mind, and I really believe that I have to connect it with the Prince and the Nightingale, or there's something like a man, like, trying to, um, to, to look for him in every place that he goes. So I guess I have to give Daniel, like, the mantle of invisibility, like, invisible mantle, like in Harry Potter, so he can find a way uh, to escape completely from that. And then he goes, if you really must deal with an undertaker telling you only pay for whatever is legally necessary, ask for a discount if you don't get one, say you'll try his competitors down the street, and we only be back if he quotes the lowest, just like Italians do when she's in an English course. I have to be honest with you guys, at this point Daniel is completely right. I mean, I agree with, you, with him from the point of view that we Italian love to have extended and very redundant English courses where we can learn everything out most from their culture and we want to spend the less possible. But so is Daniel. He doesn't want to be generous with everyone like he, I mean, he would love to, but as a kind of a regression and objection in his life, who forces him to think that's the best way is to hang on to money because that makes me proud more of myself. Well, which is, from a point of view, is very admirable. But from the other point of view, it makes him crazy. And then, what he wrote again, and it goes on, like in this poem, it's basically almost a suggestion of how we could probably be, be totally conceived and buried. Cremation could be an option. Death, I hear it costs more, and you have to book ages ahead, like when you had the epidural, remember? But then, what will you do with the hashes? I mean, now talking about cremation is a bit touching uh, subject because a lot of people are dying of coronavirus and the only option available is to cremate their body just to avoid the spread of the virus. So I'm not gonna touch that kind of theme in a more ironic way because I don't see the point of doing it. But what I'm trying to make you understand is the real mindset of the writer, which is telling you basically the preferable way to cremate completely his body, which is a prestigious way. Unless you are the Queen of England and you want everything made without spring, without serving money on the dishes, I guess you have to accept that you are like any other human being, not deciding for yourself or your death. Because if not, it would then be easier to cremate yourself. I noted down a few suggestions in case you don't have better ideas. Now he's telling how it's like in a recipe what we should do exactly at the moment of his death. So. Try to be very detailed and pay attention because unless you are a brick lawyer, you will never understand how to mix the various substances he's trying to list in here. Mix me with some cement and redo the grunting on the back wall. Cat litter, da, is looking as if I definitely outlast her. Her, the cat litter. This one's probably legal. Use my ashes to add a touch of wood fire or an authenticity. Of course it's illegal, because here in Italy it's very illegal to, it's very illegal to have a marijuana or other substances used. And then to add a touch of wood fire over authenticity to your homemade dinner party pizza. Spread a little of the grid on a hard surface, drop the flattened disc of duff onto it, then pop them in prehistoric electric oven and voila, just like in a restaurant. I think if I go to Daniel's house to have dinner, I will never try to 
I mean, cross the road, the road to direct my my body, myself being into his house because I, unless I like carnage, that is not going to be a great idea. Then the other things it says, scatter me on the sea or into a river, it will be legal in Italy and red, are the Viking style funeral. Viking style funerals? Oh my god. Viking style? Man, we are not, we are Latin, the same as you, right? So if you're talking about Viking style, I guess you are referring more to the Scottish part. But Viking, that really makes me crazy. Because, I mean, we are all coming from Julius Caesar, who also conquered Gualus, since I remember and reckoning. So I guess the more Viking style is obviously served on your dish. And then the, el the other part is looking, but there's nothing in the Codice Civil about yours. Unless you are Jack Rip the Ripper, of course there's nothing in the Codice Civile about sewers. I'm crazy and older as soon as every time that I'm trying to go on with this poem because there is no, for, for a certain point it's very meaningful but at the same time it's a master of contradiction. That's what I'm calling Daniel as well. So, as he goes on, scatter me on the sea or into a river it will be illegal in Italy, I've read, as our Viking funerals. So a model bought bearing the urn, a paper cap, which catches fire by accident. What do you say? You could have Nordic music. Obviously, we shouldn't try this if on the big day there's a smell of methane. So the first time I was really reluctant and disgusted because we were trying to compare like the volcano to the saliva of a person because of a mouth ulcer. And now I'm literally out of the blue and barely disapproving the fact that it is comparing all, all this kind of pizza argumentation to methane, which I think is his favorite aroma. In fact, let's look to the next rule. My favorite, get the preschooler to do a glue and ash picture or the late teacher. Show them how to use glue to draw a stick man sprinkled by ashes liberated over the A for a shit while the glue is still sticky. Shake the page to reveal. The finished memento mori, is that the term? Have a dustpan and brush handy. Man, I have a lot of things to tell about this kind of strokes. Because from my point of view, Daniel is a master of contradiction as the Fluxus artists were in the contemporary art. They, it's a bit viscid in his kind of thinking and the fact is that also our students, like, uh, before like asking your student to draw your picture, you have to show them a sort of kind of affection and attachment to them, which is basically what uh, sometimes it has a problem to show, because you can feel from the poem that this person has a particular problem on social skill as well, but that doesn't matter, because I respect the, per the person completely, I respect this point of view, but then the end is literally a, bit, a little bit disappointing point is as the poem was promising something more but at the very end is saying memento mori have a dustpan and brush handy which means nothing is important even me well i think that for this poem and this kind of website instead daniel makes something different something to be inspired by because he has the courage of talking about a subject that nobody has ever done before like in a more um i mean a lot of people talks about that but not in the way that is considering particularly trauma when it comes from little things which could be related to mouth ulcer or uh, simply rubbish cans, uh, the political situation, political fighting with the police, vigili, and the contradiction that Italy does a specific rule, which by the way are also present in England at the very end of the day. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of conscious, it's like a bit of Ulyssian Freudian and well, it's something to admire because it's a different kind of, of way of interpreting and narrating something. Uh, I just want to make a final conclusion of this episode telling you that Madrelinga School was the best school in Bologna that helped me to improve my English as well. So I think that I came from teachers that have very solid ground and rock shoulder. I do appreciate their uh, vocational, they, their, 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 their word, what they are doing.
doing. I really love the, the way they're putting through their passion and their um, persistence. And I don't want to, to make fun of Daniel from this point of view. I just want to be parodically ironic. And I hope that if he comes into my channel, we'll laugh as well. Because at the very end of the day, if he really thinks that uh, this is what going to go through after all uh, the epitome and after also the result that we have during the school, uh, it's a bit traumatic, it's a bit tragic, it's um, unbelievably impossible that things are going exactly in this way, but I hope for him to enjoy life and not only talking about this very harsh and tough team. Anyway, um, there is only one little consideration I would love to make to make it all the entire episode more meaningful. Guys, don't like relate your uh, creativity just all into one point, trying to wide open your horizon because talking every time of undertaking a mouthful sir, sometimes can make the other things uh, uh, that there is a psychological disorder. But you know, from a psychological disorder, there's always the possibility to make huge heart, to create great work and to create other inspiration for other people. That's what I acknowledgement that I have, which I, which I know very well that he has no psychological disturb and he was just very sadistic and tough about life. So thank you so much to follow me, thank you so much to see the channel and I hope I will see you for the next episode. Stick to Akar to Sarah Stewart, you will find the link down below to subscribe, just click into that, follow me and put a like to any videos that you might like. If you want to have much more teams related to other uh, film production, film interview, just tell me and I will try to do my best. Just remember that this in this period I cannot go out, so I cannot make uh, record Things, uh, like trying to move my camera around because maybe the police can get me and then it could be very hard to, to survive as Daniel said and I could probably finish in the lake the next day. <laughs> Thank you so much for following me. Bye!